Hey, welcome back to Accidental Science. Today we will try to make a differential probe for the oscilloscope to measure mains voltage, but unlike the one that we've seen in the previous video, this time is active, so it will occupy just one port, one channel of your oscilloscope. Stick with me. So basically the input circuit is pretty much the same uh, as, the, the, as the one that uh, we've seen in the previous video uh, for, th for the, um, uh, let's say, passive uh, probe. And, um, and uh, to understand how, why it, um, it was made in this way, I recommend you to go, uh, to go there and watch that video, link in the description or somewhere here um, on overlay. The only difference is that uh, um, this time as prov I provided uh, a couple of capacitors uh, for um, frequency compensation. Then we have an instrumentation amplifier uh, made, uh, made up with uh, a couple of uh, operation amplifiers. And that's it. <laughs> it's pretty simple. This is the voltage divider that is um, referenced to ground. Maybe I have, to, I have to add here the ground symbol this way and um, and here we have the instrumentation amplifier which is made through these two uh, operation amplifier how it works essentially this input uh, is uh, at high impedance and so uh, this acts as a, a buffer for this uh, input signal and the output of this signal uh, is then fed into the negative input of this other one that works as a buffer and subtraction for the signal that comes from this other amplifier. So here we have a, a very high impedance and we have essentially made this to work at a gain of one. Here we have a couple of capacitors that are connected direct, directly um, at the uh, power input, uh, at the power pins. Uh, the power pins uh, of the of the operation amplifiers, and uh, <coughs> and the output has um, a 50 ohm resistor, and with uh, with these two uh, zener diodes that are connected uh, in opposite um, polarity, uh, so that this um, provides um, kind of protection in the case in the case uh, something goes wrong here and uh, and uh, you know we limit the voltage here at not more 15 volt more or less because this circuit is meant to work uh, at, with uh, a battery uh, a 9, vo 9 volt battery uh, here we have uh, another later part of the circuit that uh, uh, provides the uh, ground reference uh, for these two operation amplifiers and uh, for the input and um, the ground reference uh, is provided through this uh, uh, other operation amplifier that, which is simply uh, an LM741 um, it, it is uh, connected as a buffer as you can see and it picks the, the voltage just at the middle of the uh, battery voltage so if you if the battery has 9 volt uh, with uh, this voltage divider that is made uh, with two, two exact same resistors we pick here a voltage of 4.5 volts and uh, and here of course we have the same so this is this point sits uh, in the middle of the uh, power supply uh, providing a ground reference uh, for the entire circuit uh, so this implies that the output of the uh, of the probe will n should not exceed nine um, nine volt or better four point five volt peak to peak. In reality, it is less because um, the operation amplifier is not able to reach the, the rails. If we want uh, to have a larger voltage, we can change this part of the circuit replacing uh, 
this battery with a couple of batteries or through an external power supply. I used the LM4562. Um, of course, there are even better um, um, amplifiers. But this is cheap, reasonably cheap, and um, it provides a, a, has a power supply that, go, that goes from plus minus 2.5 volt to plus minus and a minus 70 volt, 17 volts. It has a very low um, total harmonic distortion and uh, noise. Um, it has a very low input noise, a decent slew rate. Uh, of course, this would be um, a limiting factor, but uh, plus minus 20 volt per microsecond, it is um, a reasonably good um, uh, slew rate uh, compared with the uh, other operation amplifiers and uh, it should provide a, a good measurement uh, for the range of frequencies that we expect to work with this uh, uh, homemade probe uh, since this is meant to work uh, at very low frequencies uh, 50 60 hertz and uh, there are more harmonics and uh, it is likely that the audio frequency range uh, and bandwidth uh, would be enough for, for, for the measurement. And speaking about the uh, bandwidth is 55 megahertz for this uh, operation amplifier, which is pretty good. And a question current uh, of 12 milliamps, which is um, good enough to work with battery. The question current is related with the slew rate uh, of the operation amplifier. So let's move on and uh, make the circuit. I've made a sketch of the circuit here uh, to have an idea how to uh, place the components uh, on, the, on the board. The idea is to put the circuit inside this uh, little box and to put inside the battery which uh, fit perfectly and uh, place inside a, a, a PCB. Here I have some uh, pieces. Now this fit perfectly. Oh. Next stage is to draw the circuit on the board. So this is the etched circuit. It is not perfect. <laughs> uh, uh, likely the ink, uh, I have some problems with the ink of the pen that I used, uh, or maybe uh, because it's cold here and I had to uh, warm up the, the bath, uh, maybe the acid was more aggressive than, uh, than usual. I don't know why exactly. Anyway, it is not a problem. It, uh, the PCB should be functional. So let's install the components on top of this board.
Okay, the circuit is ready. Moment of truth. Let's check if it works. So, first, uh, let's see if uh, uh, I have a short uh, the power supply, the input of the battery. Okay, let's open. Yeah, so let's connect the battery. Let's see if the voltage is correct. Well, okay, no shorts. That's a good news. Let's check the equation current, which is ten. 0.5 milliamps. The good news is the battery will last longer. In order to uh, check uh, the correct ratio uh, of the voltage between the input and the output of the of the probe, I applied here at the one input uh, the a voltage at 12 volts, uh, about 12 volts. Now let's check the actual real voltage because this is not a perfect. Uh, power supply so maybe let's turn on <laughs> uh, yeah okay it's um, 11.64 volts and um, and the other input is hooked to ground so we check we will check only one uh, of the two um, inputs and uh, we will see and it and this should be the negative input so we will check the output voltage uh, 234 for uh, millivolt um, which is uh, which should be which is not correct <laughs> clearly uh, so we have a problem uh, sorry i've made a mistake of course this up configuration of uh, operation amplifier is uh, um, doesn't gain one has a gain of two and uh, and so um, here the attenuator must be uh, changed to accommodate this to, to this gain to for this gain reducing by half uh, this resistors so uh, everything uh, balance again to have a ratio uh, between 100 to 1 to the output sorry for the <laughs> mistake <laughs> so to adjust the uh, output voltage I added a couple of uh, position trimmer and so I already adjusted the the positive uh, the negative input and now I have to adjust the positive input so I have to reach here um, 300 and 37 uh, millivolt uh, the voltage uh, the input voltage is uh, 23.75 so divided by 100 uh, I should read 370 337 millivolt uh, and half now let's check the frequency responses because I'm gonna use the um, output uh, of the oscilloscope and the signal uh, generator that is that's inside the, of the oscilloscope I have uh, to raise the uh, sensitivity of the um, the input uh, let's hook the inputs uh, of the probe to the uh, to the imp to the signal generator of the oscilloscope okay and uh, as you can see there's a nice square wave with very okay is a uh, here we can see there is a little of attenu attenuation a solder variable capacitor it's uh, one two uh, 10 to 60 picofarad and here uh, <coughs> another small capacitor 
22 picofarad in parallel with the oh. <laughs> it's tricky parallel with the input I can raise this and adjust right to the point where uh, yeah Yeah, there is a little bit of overshoot. After some trial and error, I reached the conclusion that to compensate the parasitic capacitance at the input, a small capacitance of 3.3 picofarad in parallel to the first input resistor would be enough. However, due to the really small improvement on frequency and the problem that this capacitor should withstand almost 250 volts, I eventually chose to skip this capacitor altogether. Of course, this frequency response test does tell nothing about uh, the bandwidth, uh, the actual bandwidth of the probe. Uh, it is just a, a, a ballpark uh, measurement uh, to understand uh, the input compensation for uh, and the input capacitance, parasitic capacitance uh, of the circuit. I already prepared this uh, box uh, with uh, the holes and uh, installed the uh, banana uh, plug the banana sockets and uh, and the switch i have lost this screw so <laughs> i had to put another larger screw <laughs> and here the lad that will go here here like so yeah it has a snug fit nice sorry i've I've made this. Uh, I've made this off camera. Sorry. <laughs> um, and here will go the circuit, like so. We have to connect uh, everything together. Oh no, it's clipped! Ah, I clearly miscalculated something. Uh, the operation amplifier, of course, won't reach the rail, uh, so its output is always uh, below of 1 or 1.5 volt. Ah. Eventually, I changed these resistors doubling the input resistance of the attenuator so to let the amplifier to operate within the voltage range provided by the battery. However, even after this change, the output still appeared to be clipped. Well, at first I thought that uh, I had the problem with the circuit, but it turned out that uh, it is not a circuit. <laughs> the waveform is clipped because the actual mains uh, sine wave is clipped. I connected the, the um, uh, passive probe in parallel with the active probe 
and uh, look at that we have here the passive probe this passive signal from the the signal from the passive probe and here we have the uh, active probe and uh, they are exactly the same the sine wave from the mains is actually clipped and in fact uh, the um, heat room available for the circuit so should be more than than enough uh, for uh, for this for this measurement uh, so um, well yeah, i'm happy the circuit works fine <laughs> caution well the probe can work even without the connection to the ground uh, because it relies on the uh, connection on the ground coming from the the scope uh, it is important to keep this connection to the ground because if you disconnect this plug from the uh, oscilloscope uh, you end up to touch this through this connect through this plug uh, you end up to touch the mains voltage uh, across a big uh, through a big resistor uh, so the current is limited very likely limited but you know better not risk <laughs> well i hope this video was interesting for you and if so please click thumb up icon and uh, uh, subscribe to the channel and um, for now that's all folks thanks for watching see you next time bye Yeah.